up and ready to serve. Right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Manitoba High School Esports Association Spring Invitational 2021. We have got the A side finals coming in here. It is Windsor Park up against Kildonan East. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's Kildonan East on the red side, starting off at Windsor Park on the blue. And uh, my name is Russ Rambro, joined by Mark. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. We had a great game in the first, in the B-side tournament, and we're excited to see commentate on the A-side tournament as well. Absolutely. Now, something to point out right off the bat. We've got to say it. These two teams have got a pretty significant rank difference uh, over on the side of Kildonan East. Those players are very, very highly ranked. There are some Diamond 1 players over there, some mid-Diamond players. The lowest is something like Platinum, so that they are, this is a very, very strong team. Now, on the other side, Windsor Park, they've also got a few pretty, you know, it's got, got a few Platinum players as well coming up there, but up against High Diamonds, they're going to really have to come together and make sure their teamwork is on point because the mechanics might go in the favor of Kildonan East. Yeah, like, like you said, but it is solo queue. It can't be a different scenario yep. because they are good carries. But if you're in a team aspect, it can be a huge difference. You're going to see a lot of players' skills, but we have to see their team skills as well. Yeah, you can have that coordination. It can overcome some skill difference. And we have the champ select started already. These teams are right into it. Looks like a couple of comfort pick bands. Nasus going away. Uh, that's going to be Kildonan East getting that one banned away from them. And, uh, uh, you know, there are these bands coming through. We mentioned it before, the target bands maybe towards comfort picks, doing some scouting, and I like to see that. I think that's definitely the way to play these types of tournaments. Already the bot lane for Kildonan East is locked in, and it's Janna Vane. That's going to be very exciting to see that Vane hyper carry try to get online. Yeah, Vane hyper carry is a very scary. If you, like, you only see Vanes nowadays as one trick. So you don't see them really as competitive yep. players. But once, if you have someone who is good on Vane, it is a scary Vane. Def, absolutely, and Janna, the perfect champion to sort of try to activate that as well. Janna is excellent into someone like Samira who needs to get up close and personal in order to do the maximum amount of damage there. So Joaquin going on to that Samira player. Uh, Julian Caesar has picked up the Orn for the top lane and Maokai as well, so that's likely going to be a Maokai support. Definitely something we've been seeing with Samira. It can be very, very strong with all of that tankiness and that crowd control available. Yeah, like Maokai support is a... Like, it was so good in the early games because of that Imperial Mandate, because mm -hmm. it burns so much health, and because it was straight through so much damage. It doesn't look like a lot of damage, but if you look at, like, the end game stats of that Maokai yep. Aesop link, it's insane. He would sometimes do the most damage on the team. Yeah, it really sneaks up on you there. Mordekaiser has been picked as an answer. Mordekaiser obviously doing pretty well into those tanks who are melee range, needs to get up close. And Mordekaiser, one of the best top laners for sustained fights, right? Trying to get all that AoE down. So that's going to be uh, Varastel picking that one up. And now the bands have come through. Kane has been taken away, targeting junglers there, as well as Anivia uh, from the Windsor Park side. Now Kildonan East took out Zareth and Diana in the second band phase, aiming at those at that mid lane champion pool there. So we'll see what they take. They have to pick mid blind, and they are going to go with Silas. Silas is like a Viego, but he can only steal ultimate. Yeah. So with uh, Windsor Park's team, you know they're going to be looking for a team fight. So a Silas here is not a bad pick, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it as well. You know, definitely do have the ability to peel for that vein if you need to, and to carry in your own right as well. Now the jungler being hovered for Windsor Park, that's going to be uh, weak on the Nidalee, actually. I like the Kindred hover. I'm not as big a fan of the Nidalee, I'm not going to lie. I think it's really hard to make that work in this meta. But Malzahar, totally solid in the mid lane. The only thing is that Malzahar has got a very powerful ultimate, so that's just one more ability for Silas to take away and lock somebody down. Yeah, Malzahar is a great pick in this situation because of the vein carry, because you know that Windsor Park wants to be safe with that game. And another protection with that corner pick as well. 
And I'm just making sure I haven't got this right. I believe it's win it's uh, Kildonan East on red, Windsor Park on blue yep. this game. Am I correct there? Yes, you are. Good to know. Okay, just making sure yeah. we confirm that. As we do see Skarner picked in for the last pick for Kildonan East. That's going to be a very interesting composition because, yeah, Skarner obviously great engage, great ability to lock somebody down. There's two champions who force out a Quicksilver Sash over on the side of Kildonan East. So that's going to be very dangerous for champions like Nidalee, like Samira, even like Malzahar to a certain extent. And Silas can give Malzahar quite a bit of trouble. There's lots of ways to break that shield in lane, and mm -hmm. Malzahar is very good in an all-in, but in an extended fight, he really can suffer to the likes of Silas, who's just continuing to apply those auto attacks, continuing to sneak in damage. Yeah, Silas, you don't see, like, he is a great trader in the, like, in the lane. Mm -hmm. Because, like, he has so much healing, it's so underestimated because of the Conqueror and his W heal. Yep. It's like, it heals so much. I lose to Silas's all the time because they heal so much. I know, so frustrated to play against. And of course, Mordekaiser as well, doing a lot of healing. They're mm -hmm. definitely going to need Grievous Wounds on the side of Windsor Park there. And I want to mention once again, the rank discrepancy. Uh, Windsor Park are definitely the underdogs coming into this game. Mm -hmm. They are definitely going to struggle against those high diamond players over on the Kildonan East side. Unless we, you know, unless we saw the wrong thing and those were TFT ranks. Always, the, always a possibility, but I think that Kildonan East definitely have the upper hand here. I like the draft from both teams. I just don't care for the Nidalee. I'm just not sure, you know, weak. Obviously, you'd go for this champion if you feel you're really good on it. You feel like you can get a really fast clear and start making impact, moving around the map so quickly. And if we can do it, that's great. But it's really, really difficult to execute. I, you know, I, I almost, I, I prefer something that's a little bit more straightforward for these types of games. Yeah, Nidalee is like, he's a good trader 1v1, but she's not a great team fighter. Like, you can... If this Nidalee plays right, she has to focus the Janna or the Vayne. That's the only target she has, yeah. honestly. Yeah, you know, maybe the Silas, if you feel like you can get a burst down. But like you said, that healing, Silas can really bait you in. So, we have the A-side finals. We just saw Glenlawn Collegiate take a 2-1 uh, reverse sweep for the B-side finals. Um, up against J.H. Bruns, so congrats to Glenlon there for taking that one. Now we've got the A-side finals here, a best of three, Windsor Park versus Kildonan East for the Spring Invitational of the Manitoba Esports, High School Esports uh, Association. So uh, about a minute left on our spectator delay. Remember, we uh, do a little bit of a competitive integrity delay for tournament mode, so that's what we're waiting for here, and we can... You know, just talk a little bit about these two teams. For now, I'll just tell you exactly who's playing what. We have Veristel in the jungle for Kildonan East. We've got Blue Crystals in the bot lane being supported by Verdantless. Uh, Sink Juice on Silas, nice name there. And Boss Domo for, uh, in the top lane for Mordekaiser. And on the Windsor Park team, we have Samira Jaquin in the bot lane with the support of Buckshot1996 in the Maokai. At Orn in the top lane, piloted by Julius Caesar 31, and Nidalee in the jungle, controlled by Wiki, and Malzahar, generic anime boy, in the mid lane. All right, generic anime boy. We'll see if we can get a generic anime comeback here from the underdog. Definitely would be appropriate there for the Malzahar. And uh, we got 20 seconds left, so we'll see who goes into this. You know, I, I don't know. I, I like the draft for Kildonan East. Uh, there's definitely some opportunities, though, for Windsor Park. What do you think? If you have to pick who won the draft here, who are you going with? I would have to say, honestly, Windsor, uh, Kildon and East, just yeah. because of that Silas pick. Mm -hmm. You have, like, uh, Windsor Park picked a good, like, engage comp, right? Yep. But Silas can steal your guys' ultimate. Yeah. So, like, he has an Orn ultimate to steal. He has a, a Maokai ultimate to steal. Both of, them, both of them are pretty much the same. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Like every team fight, it can be a different ultimate. Yeah. And the Malzahar ultimate on a Silas, that's going to be insane damage, even though it's an AP damage as well. Yeah, exactly. It is just perfect for Silas, the dream game. And actually, you do see the uh, teleport for Silas as well. So that's going to be, yeah, Malzahar teleport. So four teleports, a very different look. Last game, we saw a bunch of Ignites in solo lanes last series. This series, it's four teleports. They're going all in on that late game split pushing strategy. They're trying to activate their team into the late game, trying to set up those split pushes. Uh, and definitely, you know, you're going to have trouble unless Malzahar gets really fed. Both of the solo laners of Windsor Park are going to struggle in those 1v1s in the split push. Yeah, especially, especially with this team comp they have. Mm -hmm. 
as we can see that Kildon and East like playing years, they have s most of their team has an average about almost seven to five years of play time yeah. in League of Legends, as you can see from their skill level. Whereas Windsor Park, their highest skill, like the highest uh, play rate, is six years, which is yeah. kind of scary to deal with when you are against the players who've been playing for almost ten years. Yeah, exactly. These players starting off way back in the day and. Uh, Definitely getting a lot of experience out of that and climbing up as a result. Good for them on that. But yeah, you know, that's going to be uh, an interesting matchup to be sure. And, you know, we have to set this up. We have to continue setting this up. But Windsor Park, definitely the underdogs coming into this. I would say that even if they take a game off of Kildon and East, that's going to be very impressive. Yes, because of the diamond. This, the diamond is such a high yep. different level from platinum and silver. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it becomes a whole different game as you climb up further into mm -hmm. the diamond rank. And uh, that's going to be very terrifying for the side of Windsor Park to deal with. But can they do it? Can they take down the Titans here and make themselves into a competitor for these side A finals? We are about to find out as we get onto the rift here. And uh, we're going to see exactly what kind of focus, what kind of strategy and, you know, you know philosophy, philosophy these two teams, teams have, have to, approach to approach this game. game. Because, because, you know, we see a little bit of it from the draft, draft but still, still, both of these, both drafts, these drafts can go multiple, multiple different ways. ways. So we've so got to see, see what these play, play styles, styles bring for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. With, with Windsor Park, Windsor Park team, they want to fight. They want to fight with the Maokai and the Ornalti. But I think... Uh, Kodolan East wants to play off this vein carry because they have a lot of protection for this vein. They have the Janna, they have the Skarner, and they have the Mordecai. So, vein, you, you, we have to focus on the bot lane mm -hmm. for Kodolan East. Yeah, you see Sink Juice already talking about silver scrapes in the chat. We talked about it last time. We, had, we went to game three last time. We are going to see if we get that coming in for this game here. Verdauntless saying hi to the casters. Hello, Verdauntless. I'll sing Silver Scrapes if we get to a game three, I promise. Uh, but we will have to get there first. And uh, the invade is coming through. So already it's Kildon and East looking to make some sort, or pardon me, Windsor Park looking to make some group up a little bit, trying to defend against the potential invade. Mm -hmm. Not going to happen just yet. And it uh, looks like all is well over here. So they're just going to come back to their regular spots. Though we do see the jungler for the side of Hildon and East starting up at the top lane at the red. Hi, generic anime boy. How you doing? But stop. Don't listen to this. Don't listen to the stream, everybody. Although we are on a delay. So no worries. They won't be able to gain any knowledge anyway. Okay. Uh, we've got the spec delay, so I'm perfectly happy to say hi to the players who are greeting me in chat. And uh, we will see what these lanes bring for us. You gotta, gotta you know, focus on those solo lanes where those really high ranked players are from Kildon and East and see if they can weather the storm. We see a lot, will this be another jungle type of game? Because mm -hmm. last, in, the, in side B, there was like a it was mostly the junglers that were carrying their team. But we'll, we don't know, we haven't seen these guys play, so we don't know who will be the carry, who will be the shot, shot caller as well. Yeah, and you know, like you mentioned before, Nidalee can be very strong in a duel early on, can do a lot of damage in the burst, but doesn't succeed that much in team fights. So we're looking for a week to look for a very uh, aggressive start, try to get some damage down. Boss Domo already taken Definitely the worst end of that trade up against Julian in the Orn. And yeah, keep your eyes as well on Joaquin down in on the Samira in the bot lane. Can be activated by that Maokai very easily. Oh, nice little teleport from Verdauntless, sneaking it around. And uh, yeah, we are going to see exactly what they can continue to do here as Joaquin gets taken quite low uh, here. Now, Going to continue to farm, but yeah, you can see already those those very high skill like this this wave pushing into the tower. Buckshot actually has to flash away there. Yeah, that was a. You can see that vein is such a like you see that Buck, blue crystal is very comfortable in the vein, not afraid to push in and get try get buckshot out of this lane. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> now it's going, going to. to the, uh, it's going to be the bot lane still continuing to push in here. 
So continuing to get that pressure down. Joaquin takes more damage from the Janna. And yeah, this is what it looks like when you see a higher ranked bot lane coming up against a lower ranked one. It just looks like this. It just looks like there's no way in. Upshot had the opportunity to take some engages, but now has run out of mana trying to get that poke down. Verdauntless has been on point with those shields, so just so difficult to continue to make things happen here as uh, Verdauntless also took the Comet, so that poke from the Janna just sticking just as much as the Maokai. Yeah, it's just like one W and you're going to get a lot of damage. I think in most players nowadays max W first just yep. for that extra poke. Yeah, especially in lane. At least you take a couple levels in it early on and Verdauntless definitely agreeing with that sentiment. So. You can see farm leads pretty much all the way across the board. Ooh, Saint Juice actually goes in and takes a tower hit. Gets a little bit of a health advantage there with the heal coming up, but probably didn't want to be quite in tower range there. Remember, Saint Juice has the teleport, so no ignite available for either of these mid laners here. But lots of hard is like you just want to farm until like you get your exactly. Zondu's tournament until it's a crazy. Moment. Ostomo taking a bunch of damage up in the top lane. Not quite gonna go down yet, and of course Veristel is also shadowing that area. Weak trying to get get the spear down. Domo just baiting for the Skarner. Now, do they want to take this fight? Boss Domo is so low. Yeah, applying a good amount of pressure on the up in the top lane there for Windsor Park. Yeah. Boston was doing well, a good job. Like, you're not going to see a lot of fighting between the Orn and Mark either, just because they're just... Orn just wants to go tank you, that's pretty much it, for the entire time. Absolutely. So, we are going to see what continues to happen with these two teams here, as uh, yeah, still pretty passive play early on in this game. Nobody going for anything crazy. Just a, a couple of farm leads and, you know, a couple of objective leads or, or uh, camp leads up for the uh, run east so far. Not able to get much more out of it just yet, but of course, remember, we have that hyper carry vein with lots of options to scale and lots of options to peel for her. It's going to be very dangerous. They're going to have to rely on people like Generic Anime Boy to really try to burst down that vein, maybe weak getting in there with that Italy cat form. Ooh, look at this, the flash coming in, and Joaquin is down! The first blood, just straight up, Verdauntless, all on his own, is able to take that one down. Here's the ultimate from the Malzahar. The flash comes away from Sync Juice. Weak just could not quite get there in time, and here's Veristel on the follow-up, flashing in, forcing it out of Merrick Anime Boy. Now Weak trying to get out of there, doesn't want to get taken down, but Sync Juice is going to find the kill, and there we go. The kills have opened up now. As Sync Juice biding his time, even after the Malzahar ult. Just such a great play by the mid jungle duo of Kildonia. Yeah, we can just go back to that play around play quickly here. In the mid lane, Skarner burning the flash. Generic enemy boy tried to get the kill off the of Sync Juice, but unfortunately, it was Sync Juice was too strong with that Silas W to gain the health back, even though he did take a tough shot. All right, there we go. Back to live. We do see everybody seems to have sort of reset. The dragon is available, but nobody really looking too hard for it just yet. A cloud dragon early on. It doesn't have a lot of impact on the game, so he's going to be really prioritizing getting that one early. Maybe more focus on the Rift Herald here to try to push down some of these lanes. That early plate gold is often so much more valuable. Yeah, plate gold is $160 per plate. And it's like, back in the day, it was so much easier to get the tower, but now with the plates, it's so much harder. And you see a lot of teams prioritizing to get plates to get the loot. Yeah, exactly. So, Joaquin. Now, uh, looking for that, um, looking for uh, even trying to get that Samira activated in lane. This vein is... You already see the difference in skill level. This means already in 67 CS, due to Samira's 46 as well. Yeah, exactly. That's a big lead for the Vayne. Now Boss Delmo trying to get something out of Julian Cz here, but doesn't manage to find it. But yeah, 70 to 47. It's so, so uh, important to keep that farm up there. Vayne, so scary when she gets ahead. and definitely say this is going to be getting ahead. Here we go, though. The engage coming through, and Verdauntless might go down here. The ultimate as well from Joaquin as S-Rank comes in. Blue Crystal's trying to get something back. Will Joaquin be able to get more? 
has already expended the flash and goes in. Blue Crystals, beautiful flash, but the double kill from Joaquin comes in. An amazing outplay from the bot lane of Windsor Park, and they find something back. Sink Juice is here to clean it up, though. And uh, will the Samira be able to get out? Joaquin taking a recall in the bush. Oh, it's so close over here. And he just gets out. Wow, Joaquin made an incredible play there. That is exactly what Windsor Park needed. Yeah, it was a great play by them. You see the Maokai coming in with the root and the Samira just cleaning up, getting that passive while screaming up. Because Samira doesn't have a really good cooldown on her ultimate. She, if, from the new players that don't know how to play Samira, she props off ability damage on every single champion. Okay, here is the Malzahar getting caught out, and yeah, he is indeed going to go down weak, trying to trade back, but yeah, you can see, Italy doesn't get really good items early on. It's just not going to do enough damage here as Sink Juice is just taunting her there in the mid lane. He's continuing to just soak up some experience there. Here we go. Buckshot looking for an engage here, but Veristel is there to dissuade them. Shot now taking so much damage that Bane is already absolutely fed. More auto attacks coming through. It's crazy to see like a Bane car like Bane carries nowadays. Yeah, it's so rare. Yeah, yeah. you see, it's like it's only Bane one tricks nowadays. Mm -hmm. Do you know why Bane is not considered a competitive champion nowadays? Uh, yeah. So. A big thing is the range. Um, you, you can really struggle against certain matchups. For instance, Ash or Caitlyn can really kind of get get you in the early game. There's a lot of hope in the bot lane lately. Um, the other thing is that Vayne, in general, does a lot of damage, but there are hyper carries that do as much damage who are safer. Uh, I would say that Jinx is a huge reason why Vayne doesn't get played a lot. Jinx pretty much does everything Vayne needs to do in a, in a competitive situation, just a little bit better, you know. Uh, long, um, long range. She's got crazy team fight damage late game. You can get real fast. And, uh, yeah, she just has all the options. Boss Domo might get caught out though. Might be running out of options. And generic anime boy does find it. A huge engage coming in here. Veristel takes down weak, and Julian has to flash away. But Veristel is still here on the chase. No ultimate available, but Starner doesn't necessarily need it as he keeps doing damage. Double kill for Veristel. That's the jungler and top dead or the side of Windsor Park, and Kildonan and East continue to surge forward in this game. Generic Anime Boy did get a kill there, but it is not going to be worth it in favor of the players. Here we go, he's just <laughs> playing with fire there. And yeah, Joaquin still looking for this. Crystals does manage to get the kill. Joaquin, will he be able to get one more? Needs another auto attack, and he gets it. Joaquin is doing so much for this team. Uh, he's going to need to do a lot as Boss Domo now puts him down, down into the death realm. I'm not sure Joaquin's got enough in his bag of tricks to deal with this. And for Dauntless, ends up getting the kill from the side. That's just BM right there. Yeah, you don't want the support <laughs> to get the kill. At least get an assist for the man. But I guess for Dauntless, like, no, yeah. I want the kill by myself. Yeah, let's, you know, get, I, I earned this one, he says. Kill secured. The Janna. You see, actually, a lane swap has come in. The Crystals has gone down uh, one too many times for Kildon the East's liking, so Joaquin showing a bit of threat and impressive stuff there from the bot lane to play against these very high-ranked players, you know, and to win lane and to be so threatening like that, even in the face of a CS differential. You can see Verdauntless now has picked up that Medjai's Soul Stealer with seven stacks on it already, and, and that Janna is going to be doing a ton of damage. Yeah, you don't see that... Uh the Magi Soul Stealer mm -hmm. often on Janna, but like it's so easier for him to proc because like all you have to do is get assists, which Janna loves to do. Just shield, shield your vein, get what I heard you get the carry, yep. and pretty much just snowball your way through the That's the plan here. They're still finding the suppression already. Weak trying to get away here, and the suppression goes on to Blue Crystals as well, but Generic Anime Boy just does not have the damage. Sync Juice comes in for the secure of the kill there. Verdauntless has been left alone in the top lane and is actually bullying out this Ornn a little bit. Or at least, maybe bluffing it. Julian definitely could go in on this if he wanted to with the Call of the Forge God available. Yeah, is it a Janna versus Ornn top lane right now? <laughs> Seems to be. Uh, I think Blue Crystals is headed over there soon, but yeah, Janna held her own pretty long. Impressive stuff from Verdauntless. 
but now we see the goal difference and the kill difference coming in and the skill levels coming in as well. Exactly. In particular, the mid and jungle uh, situations are pretty rough for the side of Windsor Park. They are, their counterparts are 3-0 and 3, both of them, with good hardy bounties on their heads. You can see Julian Caesar now up against Blue Crystals, who's playing with fire under the tower, but confident in the vein mechanics here. Weak is fighting with generic anime boy in there. Sync Juice coming in, the ultimate comes through, gets silenced, but too much damage already, and up at the top, while that was happening, you could see the vein was getting the kill onto Julian Caesar. Now, anime boy has to back off into the mid lane, but yeah, just all over the map, Kildon and East keep showing their dominance, except in the bot lane, where it is the one spot where there might be a glimmer of hope for Joaquin, but he needs to put on an absolute monster performance to deal with the rest of this team. Yeah, for, like Blue Crystal is still strong right now, even though he only, like, all he needs for Vayne is just attack speed yep. to proc her faster, which does so much damage, true damage on him if she pops it. And boy now, looking for some damage, but you can see Veristel is hiding in the wings, waiting for the opportunity, and he is going to find it here. And it goes for the ultimate, which is available. That's going to be generic anime boy blowing the flash, and the ultimate coming down. A lot of damage on the Skarner. Will they find it? Veristel keeps doing more damage. Shutdown comes in from weak, though, and the burn takes down the Malzahar in the end. So even with them playing it just right, Still, Kildon and East goes even. Yeah, like, Silas is so strong right now. He's 4 0 and 4. And he's, he, he's more fed than, like, anyone else on the team right now. Yeah. Yeah, and you talked about how scary that Silas could be, and especially when he gets fed, he's just so hard to deal with. Sync Juice coming in once again, and he takes down Woke. Now, he's going to be Boss Domo, putting Joaquin in the Death Realm, but Joaquin's pretty strong. Remember, the ultimate coming down, Boss Domo expends the Flash. All gonna be for nothing, and Joaquin gets another kill. So this is this Samira is becoming a bit of a problem for Kildonan East. Now hasn't met up with Sync Juice yet, so that's gonna be tough to fight against the Silas. But Joaquin definitely making a name for himself in this game. Yeah, Joaquin's trying to do his best because he knows his team behind. But he's like, you know what? I'll try to carry you guys. Mm -hmm. Let's try and get. We're still in this game. Don't give up yet. Absolutely. A shield bow about to come in for Joaquin on the Samira. There it is. I think she's teleporting into mid lane to get control of that so that they can set up the dragon. The first Cloud Drake was taken pretty late, by the way, over by Kildon in the East, and they're going to be able to get the second as well, but they want blood first. They're coming into the jungle. They get weak, who does get caught there. The stun comes in. Veristel able to save the ult, and <laughs> Verdauntless again securing that kill, let's say, you know? Uh, and uh, remember, the Soul Stealer is being purchased there, so 13 stacks now on that Janna. Flash in from Baristel, catches out generic anime boy. Blue Crystals finishes that one off. They're gonna go in for the Orn as well, and Sync Juice takes that one, dominating on the Silas. And this is about what we expected here. Kildon and East dominating in Silas kills and dominating in the entire game right now. There is just nothing that can stop them at this point. Yeah, they're just gonna power through it the entire game. Vayne is a late game carry, so this is where the Donut and East want to be in. Mm -hmm. Getting the Vayne fed, just power doing it to the end. Yeah, and the question is, you know, what do you even take away from this game? It is a best of three. You can try to adapt to your team, but, you know, Letting them on these really high skill cap champions doesn't seem to be the way to go, but it's knowing that they're this high rank, they are playing meta champions as well. You can easily see a Nar or a Renekton, this type of thing, come into the top lane as well. Uh, and of course, you know, those things like Olaf and, and Udi are still available. So really tough to ban out Veristel, really tough to, you know, think about how to approach the draft coming into game two. Yeah, because like, we don't know what champions they are. This is only in the first game. We don't know if we're going to go to a game three. So if I was Windsor Park, I would ban out probably the Silas, because yeah. that Silas is yeah. super scary right now. Yeah, you got to get rid of Silas. I think you're fine playing into Vayne and Janna. In fact, you could definitely argue that Windsor Park won that lane with Joaquin getting a bunch of great kills. Still, oh, here we go. Catch on to Boss Domo, who's taking a lot of damage, but still heals up a lot. Weak is on him, though. Will he be able to get the kill? He will. There we go. Middle East starting to get a little bit with that Night Harvester. And uh, they do manage to take down Mordekaiser, but Boss Domo is just fully weak side right now. Boss Domo is not the target you want to kill the most. You still have those 
bounties on all three remaining champions on the bot side of the map, and that's what you gotta deal with right now. Yeah, because like, Silas has a Banshee's Veil, which is kind of scary to deal with because if you, you can't Miles a Heart ult him, you can't stop him, yeah. or like Malkai. You have to burn, they have to burn two spells just to stop the Silas. Yeah, you really need maybe that Nidalee to hit something, or you know, something like a Maokai sapling to take down that shield before you can even think about engaging on him. Such a difficult position to be in here. He's trying to go in and you can see how easily, speaking of breaking shields, that Sync Juice, this is another reason that Mal Malzahar can struggle against Silas is because your shield is broken so easily. She's going in now. Maokai ultimate is committed and they're going to try and go in on this. Root comes through, Baristel takes a lot of damage, but a huge knockup. All the Forge God is in, Baristel might be caught out here, and it looks like Gildone and East might have extended too far, but now will it go the other way? Verdauntless on the Rampage, taking down the Maokai. Support for support, Julian Caesar taken down by the Vayne, and now they've just got to watch out for Joaquin, tries to go in, but the triple kill comes through from the Vayne. Blue Crystals taking over the game, and that is why you can't play back to front against a fed vein carry. Yeah, genetic Asian boy tried to ultimate the vein, but Silas just pretty much destroyed him when he was channeling his ultimate. Yeah, they played that really well, positioning-wise. Kildon and East, here's the flash in! Look at that! Verdauntless and Sync Juice combining for the ace. And they take down the remaining player, starting to push in on to the Nexus here towards that mid inhibitor. They are gonna take out this tower. 20 minutes in, there's an argument for just leaving this inhibitor B, and the death timers are gonna confirm that. The only thing that you're worried about is, you know, letting this game stall out too long and getting picked out by that Malzahar, but looks like Kildon and East are very much poised to continue to take this game. Yeah, it was a 4v5 fight. Like, Win like Kild Winter Park had the pick, had a kill on it, but with that Vayne and Silas, it's like you cannot win that fed war. Yeah. Absolutely, 7-0-9 now for Sync Juice on Silas. 7-2-5 on yeah. that vein, and Janna <laughs> finished his Magi. How about that? 25 stacks, baby. Taking those kills was all worth it for Verdauntless, as uh, yeah, Janna is going to be really chunking them out with those with those tornadoes. Yeah, and don't forget that Janna's shield, her E, is also by ability power, so that Silas and Vayne might never die. Yep, gonna be very difficult to take them down. You definitely would love to see a Serpent Fang snuck in for somebody that's... Unfortunately, the only champion who could build it is Samira, and Joaquin's got other things to worry about besides breaking through a Janna shield. You know, you've got to make sure you heal up. Julian Caesar face-checking. This one's gonna be a kill going through. Yeah, Julian Caesar had the flash available, but it's just not even worth it. Sea <laughs> Juice <laughs> trying to give that one to Janna, maybe. Eventually takes it down. They're you know, playing with their food a little bit here for Kildon and Park. And uh, you can blame them, they are dominating here. So, moving on, more than a 10,000 gold lead at this point. Starting to look like that last game of side B. Yeah. Now, if you're a uh, Windsor Park, you have to think, what we do next game? What yep. can we do better? Yeah, it starts with the draft, but draft seems almost impenetrable based on this, you know? It seems like they could almost take anything, so... To look for maybe some more, like, you know, what I'll say is definitely go for a different jungler. Somebody will engage, but look at this, a great reaction here. Blue Crystals goes down, the Thousand Gold shutdown comes through, but there's a lot of damage left. Let's see if they can get anything. Sync Juice, Legendary, taking out the Samira. So both AD carries are down, and that probably is going to benefit Kildonan East more. Still, great reactions from Generic Anime Boy to find that pick onto the vein. That is very, very impressive. Yeah, you got, if you're behind, you gotta take those recipe plays. Yep. Even though you will die, get get the carry fed, get the bounty off them, and get your other carries fed as well. Exactly. A step in the right direction, but they give up quite a bit for it here. Generic Anime Boy trying to find Verdauntless, who's low on mana. And you don't want to stick around too much for the Janna, not wanting to play too cocky here. Juice now looking at the dragon. Actually kind of low, and they are posturing around Windsor Park, so let's see what they can do on this one. If they were to look into the dragon pit, they'd realize Sync Juice is definitely vulnerable right now. They don't manage to get close enough. So they just back off. That's Soul Point and, and the Ocean Soul potentially on the table for Kildon. But they're looking for another fight in the jungle, but unfortunately they cannot burn anything from them. Yeah, that Maokai ultimate. Continues to be used. 
sort of on cooldown. You see the Oblivion Orb is well picked up, and they're definitely going to need it if uh, that Ocean Soul comes through. The likes of Mordekaiser and Silas, well, it just it just sucks to play against them if they've got um, Ocean Soul. There's no other way to put it. And then Caesar. Now they're actually heading over towards the Baron. Remember, Sink Juice has a teleport available, so... Well, this Baron, it, there's not even a chance to contest this. It's gone. Yeah, it's just like vain so much thought damage and the Mordekaiser. It's like... What? It's, it's really hard to stop a vein carry right now. Yeah, you know, there's there are options, but they are getting less and less numerous. American Anime Boy looking for the ultimate, trying to find it on the vein, who has not picked up a Quicksilver Sash, sash yet, relying on her positioning instead to avoid that Nalzahar lockdown. Luther still was punished for that last time, but they traded one for one, so... Too much to speak of there. Generic Anime Boy dodges out of the stun. Does get the ultimate available. Weak is here too. Will they be able to take down Sync Juice? Very tanky with the healing on the Silas. Keep chasing him, but they just can't get enough. And that's a lot burned. Now it is the Nidalee getting caught. All the Forge God comes in, but it's too late to stop any of that from happening. Buckshot trying to go through. Look at the amount of burst, though, that he's taking. This almost looks like they are wanting the final push. Still going in. East. They are looking for the Nexus turrets here with Barrened Up minions approaching the base. Not too big of a wave, and the death timers aren't that long. Since she's continuing to bait them out, here's Buckshot trying to go in. They're still available. Able to get much though, and yeah, wow, they just keep putting pressure down. Joaquin taking us so much damage. The ignite is down. Will Joaquin survive? He will. Crystals takes down the Orn though. These champions are falling. They're dropping like flies here. And Buckshot is the next to fall. Sink Juice, legendary, coming in with the 11 0 and 10 performance on the Silas. Joaquin trying to find something, but that is the surrender coming through. So that will be Kildonan East taking a monumental first game here in this series. Yeah, that was like, you, you could tell the difference in skill level. The, the mid lane was fed, the bot lane was fed, even the Janna was fed, you don't see that often. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the 25 stack Janna with the Magi's Soul Stealer, definitely something to watch out for too. Flexing on him a little bit. And so as we get back into the game, we will see exactly what the adjustments are coming out of Windsor Park. Um, and we will see exactly what we're going to find from the next game. But before we do, we're just going to take a quick break between games to get our bearings and let the players have a bit of a break. So we will see you for the Manitoba High School Esports Association Spring Invitational right after a quick break.
fired up and ready to serve. Welcome back, everybody, to the Manitoba High School Esports Association Spring Invitational. We got League of Legends today, and we have Windsor Park up against Kildonan East in the Side A Finals here. It is already one game to zero for Kildonan East. Definitely the juggernauts of the tournament with very high-ranked players all across the board. But last game, Mark, we definitely had a bit of a fight coming get down, in particular from Joaquin down in the bot lane on that Samir. Yeah, Joaquin was like probably the, the sole purpose of their team. So what, So now Joaquin has to kind of think of, okay, how can I carry my team for a 2-0 sweep if, I, if it's possible? Yeah, they need that reverse sweep coming in in order to win it up against very stiff competition here. And we'll see what kind of bans come through as it is going to be at Kildonan East once more over on the red side and Windsor Park over on the blue. So the same bans are coming through except Skarner now has been taken away, really not wanting to deal with Veristel over on that Skarner. That really caused problems with that for them, but uh, you know, to be honest, pretty much all the champions uh, on Kildonan East caused a lot of problems for them last game. Yeah, it was like you had the Vayne carry, you had the Janna and the Silas. Skarner was good, but he wasn't the main focus of the team. He was there just to support their team. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm surprised they let the Silas through again. I think that that was probably their biggest problem there in the mid lane. I like the Malzahar pick. I think it's totally solid. You know, it's easy to execute. You know exactly what you're getting and you know what to do on it. But, you know, the Malzahar pick definitely has counters and Silas is kind of one of them. So, you you know, it's really tough to work with. Now, Sync Juice hovering that Serath over on the side of Kildonan Park. And, Maybe going for more of a bit of a poke composition, but Ezreal has already been picked up over on Windsor Park. Yeah, Ezreal is a safe pick. Like you can, like if it against a blood rank, he can just e away, and like it won't. It, it's like a weird interaction, but it does work. Yeah, it looks like uh, they were thinking of the Zerath support, but in the end, it's going to be Verdantless going back onto the Janna for Kildon and East and. Uh, Janna definitely did uh, did quite a bit of damage last game, getting that Medjai Soul Stealer stacked up to 25 stacks. And well, Janna was really threatening. Now they're thinking of what to go with, and maybe it just straightforward go for the Ash. No, last second they change over to the Kaiza. Much more complicated to play, but also a lot of potential to do damage all throughout the game. Yeah, Kaiza is almost like a, a, a pseudo vein. Like mm -hmm. it's more of attack speed proccing. Yep. And with Vayne, you're just going to be tumbling around. Kaisa, you're just going to be dashing. It's pretty much the same carry as yeah. well. Well, yeah, and you asked me last game kind of, you know, why Vayne has fallen out of the meta. And I didn't mention this, but Kaisa is actually a big reason because you're exactly right. Kaisa does pretty much all the things Vayne does and most of them just a little bit better. Yep. Uh, you know, a, a little bit better damage profile, more mobility in some ways, you know, getting invisible, doing a little bit more damage in the sort of the mid-game stages of the game. So, and obviously that higher range and that... Uh, and better survivability. So yeah, Kaiza definitely going to be dangerous. And Orn has been picked up this time, taken away from the side of Windsor Park. This time Orn picked up for the top laner boss Domo, who uh, also you know wasn't the carry. Definitely played weak side last time. So Orn he definitely seems like a good fit as Mordekaiser. There we go. The reverse matchup coming in. Yeah, Mor Orn Orn doesn't need to get carried uh, like be carried. He's more of the supporter team because. We didn't talk about Orn because we never got to that late game yeah, stat, exactly. but Orn gives stat boosts to each of their opponents, uh, their, his teammates, because of his forging. Yep, exactly. Those mythic items, which I can never remember the name of, so I'll mm. hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make them up. Yeah. We'll be all good. But Mordekaiser, and by the way, we have to point out that uh, there has been a substitution coming in for Windsor Park. They're putting in, uh, this name is Nezu Wuko Wo, and so I think maybe Nezu is just a good shorthand for that one, but Mordekaiser has been picked up by uh, that player, so we'll see what kind of changes that uh, that substitution brings in, and we'll see what they can do to take advantage of that. The bans have been coming through. Zareth got taken away there, and as well as Darius. Meanwhile, Galio and Hecarim were taken away on the side of the Windsor Park team, so we'll see what kind of jungle picks come through. It is Lee Sin. By the way, Morgana was picked. Definitely a possibility of that jungle, and not anymore, because there's the Kane. Uh, can't wait to talk a little more about this. I love playing Kane, but we will move on and uh, come back to that a little bit later. Yeah, Kane is a very strong carrier. Like, you can go either blue yep. or red side. If For the new people that don't know, Kane has two forms. 
a red form that deals with heavy tanks, mm -hmm. and a blue form that's pretty much just a straight assassin. Yeah. And now that we see the rest of the team composition, you almost certainly are going to have Red Kane coming in up against this team. The other thing to note about Kane is that uh, when you damage melee champions like Orn or Lee Sin, then you get closer to your red tank busting crowd control form. The more you damage ranged champions like Janna and Kaiza, the closer you get to your assassin form, and eventually you've got to pick one or the other. So that's going to be an interesting one to see. If you see a third ranged champion here coming in for the side of Kildonan East, you could potentially go for Red Cane and actually or Blue Cane, and actually it's Nar. So you definitely want to go for the Red, but you've got to be careful because sometimes when you're attacking Nar, he's ranged, and so he's bringing you closer to that assassin. Anyway, I could go on for hours about Cane. I'll try to. Uh, restrain myself. Kiana also was the last pick for the side of Windsor Park. That is going into the mid lane, probably up against the. Oh, the, and this is an interesting thing to note here because uh, we're not sure exactly where these champions are going. Orn and Nar, both top lane champions. Yeah, it's it's a weird uh, composition they went for. Like Nar, you see both Nar and Orn in both the top lane. Leeson is in the jungle, but right now in the meta. Leeson can go anywhere, so yeah. this is very interesting to see what they're planning to do here in Kinzona East. Yeah, you have seen Orn in the mid lane. Sometimes those tanks really do work out, but Nar you almost never see in the mid lane. Yeah. Very, very unlikely. Nar really benefits from a long lane. Uh, and, of course, Kaiza and Janna, the only two champions we're really sure of. Veristel is picking up Lee Sin, so that's almost certainly going into the jungle. And, yeah, man, I, I just don't know. It's uh, it, it's Sync Juice on the Orn, and so Sync Juice is the mid laner. So we're expecting Orn mid, likely going up against um, Kiana. Kiana, which is being kept by Joaquin. This is a very interesting change. So look at this: generic anime boy who played mid last game is going onto the Ezreal. Joaquin, who played ADC last game, is onto the Kiana. Now Buckshot's on the Morgana. That's support, but yeah, they've really changed it up here. And uh, yeah, maybe this is the answer Windsor Park needed to maybe surprise their opponents a bit and grab a game off of them. Yeah, like Joaquin played super well on Samira, even though his team was behind. But he's probably saying, all right, I will try to power farm and help you guys out in the mid lane. I don't want to stay bot lane anymore. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see in terms of the jungle matchup, Kane has a faster clear than Lee Sin, but struggles in the early game to fight Lee Sin. Uh, mm. Kane does want to fight early game because you want to start getting those orbs, get closer to one of your two, uh, you know, evolved forms. But Lee Sin is just so good in the early game, so good in combination with another champion in those skirmishes. That's exactly what you pick Lee Sin for. Uh, interestingly enough, you're more, you know, you're more interested in going up. A, in the 2v2 with someone like a Silas or, you know, a fighter like that. With an Orn, Lee Sin, you know, doesn't have a lot of kill pressure onto that mid laner, uh, you know, Kiana. Maybe a little bit, but a bit tough to make that one work. They are, uh, on the side of Kildonan and East, they're really relying on blue crystals for damage here. There's very few other options in terms of late game damage scaling that they've got. Yeah, well, Kaisa is a very late game champion because, like, you need them items to evolve. Because Kaisa, if you have 100 attack damage, you will evolve your team to do more missile and more attack speed. So you have to focus, so Kazone East has to focus on that ball lane to get that Kaisa fed. You don't have to focus on the mid or the top lane because they're going to be tanks and pretty much your hard CC on that team. And I think Windsor Park just know this, that's why they, they're probably opting for that blue game to get rid of that Kaisa. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you know, just reviewing these compositions, it's very interesting what Windsor Park have done, appearing to do some sort of a role swap with Joaquin going into the mid lane. And you know, if you've got a really skilled player, and we know Joaquin is, then maybe you do want to put them in that main carry mid, la mid lane position. Pardon me. Try to get that Kiana scaling. Try to get the roaming off, because that's something Kiana does really well. And uh, if you start getting that rolling, you can get it. You can, you can really take over a game. Only thing is, we've got to remember those skill discrepancies. Kildonan East is so highly ranked mm -hmm. in this league. They are so, so good, and they've, you know, they're so experienced with these champions. So Windsor Park have to be at their absolute sharpest even to have a chance here. Yeah, I think, yeah, Boss Domo is probably the lowest rank on that team. So, mm -hmm. like, you could see it in the skill level. You saw yep. Boss Domo was 0-3, but the rest of the team was, like, fed yep. off their minds. 
Yeah, hugely fed. So we are about to load into the game. Windsor Park having to stay alive in the side A finals at the Manitoba High School Esports Association Spring Invitational. Meanwhile, Kildonan East looking to send them home with one more win here to win this best of three. Now, we'll see who will prevail here and we'll see if Windsor Park can hang on and try to continue on with this. But now we do see exactly where everybody is going and it looks like uh, it is going to be Joaquin into the mid lane with that Kiana and going to be up against the uh, Sink Juice on the Orn most likely. Of course, you know, I've never seen Nar mid, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. Definitely could be a thing. Uh, that they go for so that's very it's just a fascinating you know change up in particular from the side of Windsor Park there with the roll swap yeah you don't see a lot in our mid just because he can bully out the top of so easy with that poke the range comp in the little form as well absolutely yeah. Yeah, and we'll see what Leek is considering you can see the uh, Gildona and East Folks coming into the mid lane for a little dance party. We happy to join in with that. <laughs> and uh, oh, the uh, bot lane from the uh, side of Windsor Park, not interested in dancing. They are interested in fighting. So they put down a little poke. And everybody backs off. I think it was just like a friendly handshake without yep. cue biting in as well. Exactly. Everybody. Just staying honest. Good, clean fight. Everybody agreed. And you can see Verdauntless and Blue Crystals maybe looking for some sort of death bush situation, but they're on a ward. This is a great read by the side of Windsor Park, and they're going in, looking for the Q. Doesn't manage to find it. They're going to keep and in, in the end, even though they had full knowledge, still Windsor Park come out with a HP differential there as uh, the Dark Binding was dodged. Verdauntless still trying to be a nuisance up here at the uh, Tri-Bridge. Yeah, now we can see that it is the Orn mid, so this is going to be a very hard matchup for Kiana. <laughs> it's going to be like, because Orn is just a, a tank, mm -hmm. no matter what he has. Yeah. And it's going to be so hard for an assassin to deal with. Yeah, that's the last thing you want to be facing as Kiana is in a full tank. So Kiana definitely wanting to try to push out these waves and roam. Uh, you know, because we don't have a lot of kill pressure here. And you can see Sink Juice already getting the level 2, already trying to go for that kill early on, and that is another danger. Orn, remember, even though he's been nerfed a little bit, he still can do a lot of damage in the early game with those uh, vulnerable blows. Yeah, Orn is, like, you don't see a lot of Orns nowadays just because he is very, very easy, hard to play because yeah. of the combos you need to do. But if it's an orn, a good orn, it's a scary orn. Absolutely, and there, yeah, there definitely are some tanks who are sort of taking orn's position, able to do a little bit more. Nar, of course, being one of them, but uh, orn will never truly be out of the meta. You know, giving his team that much more gold's worth of stats at the end of the game when the mythics start coming through and when the levels start going up. So, yeah, Joaquin's definitely got to be careful here. Yeah, you can see there's no damage at all. Izu. In, trying to take down boss. Leek is going for some sort of gank here and Sing Juice just stops and lets it hit him. <laughs> you hate to see that. Verdauntless is already trying to roam here along with the Lee Sin, but not managing to find much. Joaquin is playing pretty safe. There comes the tornado to reveal that they're there. Everybody backs up. Verdauntless actually loves to roam. He needs to do like that with that. Will he go for the Magi's again? Because yeah. He's gaining so much assist. Buckshot and Anime Boy doing a nice job here to try to bully that lone ADC out of lane. Since he's taking the Electrocute, but Lucin is back here to try and find something in weak, just trying to get that farm, but hasn't even farmed his top, uh, his top side camps yet. Instead, trying to wander into the jungle and maybe try to find Lee Sin, who's way on the other side of the map here. Eric Anime Boy takes a bunch of damage. Ignite is ticking. Looks like he's going to just survive very close there. Flash coming through, but Ezreal managing to get out of that one using both summoners there. Kane's actually like power farming the least in the jungle, which is kind of not bad. But if you're playing Kane, you kind of want to keep ganking every single lane you can. You really need that evolution. Looks like Weak is considering this top lane gank. Here we go, going in. Boss Domo getting pretty low here, Weak. 
misses the Q. They don't even blow the uh, summoner spell, so a little bit of pressure applied, and Lee Sin is nowhere near, so it's definitely going to be good for the Mordekaiser, but you'd hope to get a little bit more. Weak didn't even get that many orbs. The more damage you do, the more orbs you're getting, and closer you get to that evolution, but uh, Weak not managing to find much there, so he's got his uh, top camps yet to farm, while Lee Sin sort of trades for his own bottom camps. If you're, if you're playing Kane, what was like the ideal time, like, ideal time you want to be in your evolved form? Yeah, it really depends on the game. Uh, you know, something like a, a 13, 14 minute evolution is pretty great, um, but you generally have to be fighting quite a bit. Uh, Though, if you get past 20 minutes, you, you're really feeling it. You know, Kane is pretty weak getting into the later stages of the game if you haven't evolved into the mid game. So you really need to start fighting. You really need to get those orbs. Sometimes there's a sort of a, a, a meme, you know, int for form, uh, which just means you go in on a fight you're most likely going to lose uh, <laughs> just because you need that form. And it's it often does get to that desperate of a situation. So we need to track uh, weak here and try to make sure that he is getting those orbs when he needs them. This is a game also where even if you get blue cane first and you hit more of those uh, ranged champions, you still just wait a couple of minutes for melee for, for the red cane. It's just so much more valuable. Here. Yeah, like, like so you, would you say you never want to go blue cane in this situation? Right? Uh, against this team, I would almost never go blue cane unless if I was ridiculously fed early on in the game, just you know, getting to the point where I could be one shotting almost anyone on the team. With these two huge tanks, Nara and Orin, it, Blue Cane just is not going to be very effective. And with Janna able to peel your squishies, yeah, it, it's it's Rost all the way here. We see a little trade in the fight. It looks like Sinkus is not taking any damage from his Kiana. Not at all. Call of the Forge God comes in. Joaquin has to get away, but there is Baristel coming in to take the first blood away. Sinkus, yeah, and you know, just... <laughs> It is so, so tragic for Joaquin to be in this position because, yeah, you know, they just completely outdrafted. Kildon and East completely won the draft in this situation, mm -hmm. getting those two tanks. The only thing you got to worry about is making sure you get enough damage on that Kaiza to get into the late game. Looks like they're well on the way. We having to go in, looking for Verdauntless here. This is the W and actually just a flash away, and Verdauntless is just breaking their ankles here, but generic anime boy does manage to find one. There we go. Verdauntless goes down. Good job by Weak to get pressure on there. Did have to expend the flash to actually escape death here. Sinkjuice as well is uh, in trouble here up against Nezu. Now Joaquin, will he finally get a kill? There's the flash coming in. Nezu is catching up to him, and there we go. Sinkjuice goes down. No assist for the Kiana, but that's definitely something you want. This is the matchup you're more pre preferring here uh, on the side of the um, on the side of the Mordekaiser and on the side of Windsor Park is getting that Mordekaiser into the Orn really can do well against those melee characters. Yeah, Or Mordekaiser is a great trader in overall in close range champions. With against the Nar, he's gonna have a hard time struggling just because Nar can just poke him out so easily. Of that range advantage. These are good instincts here. Uh, Weak is going for that dragon. And um, seeing that Lee Sin was up in the top lane and having to recall, that's a good job to trade that one away. So still gold staying relatively even here. A bit of an advantage for the side of Kildon and East, but nothing insurmountable at all. And Weak is doing well, you know. He's pretty much keeping up in CS, involving himself in those ganks a little bit, trying to continue to get that orb, trying to continue to get the objective control. Well, the other thing about Orn is that he doesn't have to go back to buy yes. anything. So, like, he can punish Joaquin in the mid lane just because, like, as you can see, the CS difference is so huge right now mm. in the mid lane. Double the CS and he, yeah, Sink Juice continuing to just destroy those trades. Already plated Steel Caps and Bombie Cinder completed for the Orn, and that Lethality is not punching through that anytime soon, that's for sure. Very, very tanky. And that Forge God champion, Nezu. And a little fancy feat to dodge out from some skill shots. And backing off, but we will apply some pressure there. Buckshot has the ultimate available, but Blue Crystal's poking them out a little bit too far. Yeah, if you're playing Kai'Sa, you just want to like just keep on farming and get kills here and there. Not all the time, but you want to uh, get your item as quickly as possible. Absolutely. 
Kaiza looking for more gold here. Wave is cleared. They have to back off. Ooh, Stomo. Did he get that? Uh, no, Lucky got it. Weak got it? Okay, well, yeah, pretty close, though, yeah, on, that, pretty uh, close. on that trade. Didn't quite catch it, but uh, Stomo managed to steal that good read there to try to go for that, but didn't find it. Who knows where Weak is, and still no transformation for the cane. You can see the Gore Drinker is already starting to be mm -hmm. built, so yeah, it definitely is going to be Red Cane here. And I think that's the correct choice. Try to peel for your carries. Try to do that crowd control. You're a little bit low on crowd control in this team. Here comes Veristel, though. A beautiful in second. He even hits Buckshot there with the kick back. That is gorgeous from Veristel. Look at that angle. Yeah, if we go back to it, that was a that was, oh yeah, that was such a nice insight by Veristel. He like there was no wards in the bot lane either, which is crazy. And Veristel just comes in. One Q and a flash ultimate and gets both Buckshot and Generic Asian Boy and it gives the kills to the Kai'Sa. That is amazing. You know, we've seen, you know, the, the Insec and the Lee Sin mechanics have come a long way since back in the day. <laughs> but man, it's still so lovely to see those plays, see it executed that well. And yeah, and the cherry on top hitting Buckshot as well with the knockup. That's just, that's just awesome. Uh, Veristel with a great highlight play there. Now, Ivy continuing to come up. Here's Nezu going in with the Death Realm. Boss Domo taking a lot of damage, and still Boss Domo continuing to play weak side here. The flash away, and Boss Domo is going to be able to escape here. And that is not what Nezu wanted there. The Death Realm not managing to secure the kill at all. Nobody's nearby, so they could maybe try to go for some sort of tower dive here. And with Weak having the Kane ultimate available, it's definitely a possibility, but they decide to just back off. And so Boss Domo only has to expend the Flash and uses so, so much of their time. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty much like... For Dauntless, is just pretty much leaving uh, Blue Crystals alone, saying, Oh, you're our carry, so you'll, I'll leave you alone to get fed. And yeah. for Dauntless, uh, Blue Crystals is so ahead of this as well. He already has a Kraken Slayer built in to his oh, Nice dodge by Joaquin, but he doesn't dodge the Lee Sin Q. Aristel and Sync Juice combined for another one there. They put so much pressure on Joaquin in the mid lane, and he just has not been able to handle it. Here comes Weak. All he wants is those orbs at this point, just trying to get that fight down. He does not have the damage to win this fight. Keeps going in, flashes away after using the ultimate and the uh, spike there. We go going solo. Now Veristel is targeting on the tower. Nezu might have the burst to finish him off though. Continuing to do that damage. There we go. He goes down and actually Boss Domo might be in trouble as well with no flash. There we go. The flash coming in. Double kill for Nezu. Trying to pick up the pieces here but Blue Crystals is on a killing spree on the other side and no matter how much Windsor Park get, it seems like Kildon and East are still two steps ahead every time. And Buckshot's going down as well. Yeah, Blue Crystals is like so strong right now. Like, what's a fed Kai'Sa is a scary Kai'Sa, and now they are getting the bot tower. Yeah, they're gonna get all five plates down there. Remember, the first dragon was taken, so that slows down at least the soul a little bit, as well as Nezu getting some nice free time in this top lane. 3010 is nothing to shake a stick at for the Mordekaiser, so we'll see what kind of stuff we can get out of that. Oh, the W missing for weak. Got the does he have the ultimate available? Not quite, and so Blue Crystals just takes him down. Unfortunate with the miss on the W, that probably would have secured the kill for uh, Weak if he had hit that, but good sidestep by Blue Crystals. And Joaquin just continues. It's just so futile to do anything <laughs> against this. Yeah, Jack is trying to at least get the kill off, but misses Ooh. his Q. Yeah, nice sidestep once again from Blue Crystals. Fancy feet over here in the bot lane on the Kaiza. It's going to be still Kildona and East grabbing the dragon and staying way ahead in this game. Now you see the discrepancy again, but we saw it in game one. The mid lane is 126 CS above the Kiana, and the Kai'Sa is super fed right now as well. And both of them, yeah, 5-0-0 zero, and zero on Kai'Sa there. That's just, that's just harsh. Joaquin can do what he can, but he hasn't even been able to leave his tower, never mind leave the lane and try to roam. So Joaquin is really struggling here, and there's no question as to why. You can see, once again, there's uh, the uh, uh, Verdauntless looking for more out from the Raptor Pit here. Continuing to use that Janna tornado, but here comes the Death Realm, Bostomo. A little bit of trouble here. 
He's coming in, trying to find something. Gonna use the ultimate? No, he's not. He just has to run away. That's really unfortunate. And he not being able to quite finish it off. Here's Joaquin trying to get the one shot here. Does have the ultimate, goes in on that, but Blue Crystals is just too strong. Joaquin cannot do it, dominating on the Kaiza, and it's just all from bad to worse. Baristel will also taking down, and there we go, another Flash R for the Lee Sin. Baristel just taking over this game wherever his teammates are not, and yeah, Blue Crystals just unkillable in this bottom. Yeah, like, I, I think uh, Blue Crystal is a Vault form now, oh. and... <laughs> oh, man! Before we can even relax, Blue Crystals finds another victim, Generic Anime Boy, falling down to the burst. The yeah, castle is, like, pretty much, like, you have to send your whole team just to stop one person. But if you do that, you're gonna lose uh, in the top lane as well. Yeah, Buckshot, actually a nice job on the ultimate there. Tries to get away, but Baristel finds the Q, the fade away. Weak also going very low, but doesn't quite go down. So, so close there, and yeah, you know, it just keeps, keeps being a terrible situation for Windsor Park, no matter what they try, no matter how well they execute. Kildonan East just gets the better of them every time. And, uh, you know, Windsor Park has fought valiantly and gotten advantages in certain lanes, but, you know, Nezu in game two, uh, Joaquin in game one, just, you need a little more than just one strong member in order to get these uh, team fights going in your favor. Yeah, it's like League of Legends is a team fighting game, don't get me wrong. But you need all your team members to do well. If, like, you, you can solo carry solo queue, but in the yep. team game, you cannot, like, one person cannot carry a whole team. Yeah, too much coordination. Kildonan East looking like the stronger team in every aspect so far. And so they are going to continue with their dominance. Here is the Death Realm coming in. Boss Domo taking a bunch of damage. Once again, weak side Boss Domo taking a lot of damage now. And will he get the Mega Nar in time? The Q coming in, the shutdown. But Sync Juice is behind with the Orn. Well, the question is, oh, there's no question actually, because here's Baristel and Verdauntless, the Goon Squad coming in to finish the job. Nezu continuing to try to do damage, but there's just nothing he can do. Not even the Riftmaker completed yet, as he had to go into armor to deal with this Lee Sin. So, very, very difficult here, and Sync Juice claims another one. Yeah, Kildon and Ease, like, they're playing super well right now. Like, Kaisa is just, like, solo farming the entire lane, while they send their whole team top lane just to stop the defend more Kaisa. You know, we might have gotten this transform off, but I told you, you know, 20 minutes, and we're getting dangerously close to that. Eric Enemy Boy has a couple of low HP players near him though. Gets knocked up, but here we go. Weak coming in, trying to get a kill, and none of them go down. Oh my goodness, so close. But the healing comes through, and they are just too far ahead in gold for anything, anything to work right now. Yeah, Blue Crystal just came out of nowhere. As you see, well, like if Kaisa gets like one of his teammates, CC is one of their opponents. Kaisa can just fly in with his ultimate and be in the team fight in yeah. a blink of a second. And it's so close, but that's such a tilter for that to happen, you know, to go down uh, after getting so close to getting two kills there and not getting either one. Another thing to point out, Mark, is uh, in that Janna's inventory, we are getting close to another 25 stack Medjai Soul Stealer on the Janna for Verdauntless. So that's going to be pretty difficult to deal with as well. We saw how strong it was last game. Yeah, Verdauntless is playing super well as a giant support. He knows his role, he knows what he has to do. He's been he's been leaving his AD carry alone, which is not ideally, yeah. but he trusts his AD carry and the years of experience. They probably play together a lot. They've been yeah. practicing a lot. They're like, I'm gonna leave you alone. You can, uh, I'll help the other team. Here's an engage. They might have Boss Domo cut out here as Nezu puts him in the death realm, but Baristel is here to finish it off. Baristel unstoppable. Weak trying to get away, needs to land a knock up here. Doesn't quite find it, but the shutdown comes in, so Joaquin showing up just in time. Finally, Varistel goes down and gives up that shutdown gold. And, uh, you know, a couple of kills going, you know, over, so a three for two, but, you know, Windsor Park will take what they can get at this point. Unfortunately, they just can't get anything from that. The dragon is available for no one here. Yeah, it, like, it's so hard for. Like, it's okay to get one kill, but Sync Juice is still alive. That's yeah. the main problem. Like, it looks like he didn't take any damage from that one Ezreal R, which is kind of disappointing to see yeah. as an Ezreal player. You hate to see it, for sure. And yeah, Ezreal takes a while to scale up now, having to build a bunch of items in order to really get going. You've got the um, Man Immune having to come in yet before you even get to build a Mythic here. Coming in with a flash, Blue Crystals. 
Maybe in a bit of danger. Looking to outplay this, and Weak just doesn't even try to go for the knockup. Has to get out of the way. Joaquin goes for the ultimate. A little bit disjointed on the attack. Blue Crystals is back in. Ultimate comes through. Go for Nezu. Pulls him in, but doesn't really have the lockdown available, and so Janna will continue to push them back. And yeah, two kills for nothing again. Yeah, but Dauntless is just protecting the uh, Blue Crystals so much. He's playing well as a support. And don't get me wrong, Blue Crystals is playing well. Mm -hmm. But he would have died without that little Dauntless Janna on him. Yeah, he's just got a shield on him all the time. Uh, what else is there even to say? These two teams having such trouble getting anything going. Aristel goes in, maybe a little bit too ambitious this time, as yeah, he is going to go down to another tower hit. Actually kicks one in. Here's Joaquin trying to get a kill down. Aristel is surviving way longer than he has any right to, and now the call of the Forge God from the side. Shut down onto the Lee Sin, but a double kill for Blue Crystals. Could this be the final nail Good in kill. the coffin? Could this be the end of the oh, game? Are we getting the a, end, a quadra kill is on, and Blue Crystals is just too low to try to look for that pentakill. And so they are going to have to be satisfied with the Quadra and, of course, the Inhibitor here. So, yeah, really, really tough situation, I believe. Oh, here's Blue Crystals trying to get that. Goes in. As a, it was uh, too late for the Pentakill, but an extended Pentakill, we'll say. Yeah, a Pentakill is a Pentakill, yeah. and Blue Crystals is just putting the icing on the cake at this point. Yeah, do they even try to go for Dragons is the question. You know, the Cloud... Soul is what's available, and they just are seeming like they don't really care about it. Trying to push into that base, trying to end this one, trying to take their victory of the side A finals here. Kildonan East are the dominant team in this Manitoba High School Esports Association tournament, that's for sure. Nobody has been able to match them, and it look like Windsor Park are quite up to the task either, as they are just so, so good as a team and so good individually. They've got a deadly combination. Yeah, Blue Crystals is playing super well right now. He's matching the level of the Nimble, which you don't see often in an AD carry, which is kind of scary because none of the, the Dunning, uh, Windsor Park team has the matching level as a, of the Kaiso, which is kind of scary to see. Trying to go in, maybe looking for some sort of steal, but look at that burst. It's just too much. And Blue Crystals continuing to dominate this entire game. Joaquin, there we go, you know he's hitting that, but actually, the stun comes through. Will Blue Crystals go down? Has to flash away. Now he's in the death realm, the shutdown comes through. That's very important. Not a lot of damage left, but there is the Ezreal getting kicked in, and he's gonna go down as well. Okay, I said not a lot of damage, but I forgot about the 25 stack, the 23 stack Janna, who is going to finish it off. The ace comes through. They finally take down Blue Crystals. They deny the perfect game, but at what cost, Mark? It looks like they are going to push through for the end. Yeah, the death timers are way too high, and I don't think Waki can do enough to stop this push right now, yeah. and he's going to sacrifice his life for the turret, but is unavailable to protect it. There we go. So Weak goes down. Now the towers will go down as well, and they are going to finish that off. They leave both towers at like 1 HP and are trying to go for the kills instead. Finally, both towers go down. The minions are going to finish it if they don't want to, as it slowly goes down as they fight for the last couple of kills, as they fight for the last couple of bits of glory, and they are backing off, actually. Uh, Wanted to uh, cap this one off, but it looks like uh, we are waiting for one more push. Yeah, one more push will end the game. As well. Yeah, so we're gonna have to wait for this one, delaying the inevitable, it seems. As uh, Baristel is gonna go in on a week, and Baristel might get caught out here. Very, very aggressive. Week gets the ultimate off. Close in on the lease in, but the knockup comes through. And that's going to be. Oh, the kill does go down on Varistel. So Weak gets the triumph and uh, gets back in. <laughs> Here we go. That's another kill going back. 34 to 14. Pretty rough uh, situation. A 15,000 gold lead, but, um, you know, if. Uh, if they're going to the East, want to keep messing around, well, we might find out. Well, you can see that like, Kaisa is like super strong right now. She got the Orn upgrade just a moment ago, so she is very hard. going to be doing so much damage in so little time. Yeah. And hope not to see too much BM. A little bit of BM is always fun, but uh, too much BM just sort of 
ruins the fun a little bit, but Blue Crystals might have bitten off more than he could chew. This is so much BM is maybe just an overextension, but a double kill and that Kaiza is popping off right now. Sink Juice fighting up against Mordekaiser who has to use the uh, Zanyas there. Backing off a little bit. They're going for the full on all structures, 100% completion here for, uh, for Kildona and East. And finally they are pushing in. Verdauntless goes down. Blue Crystals though, triple kill. And this is going to be it, folks. We are seeing the minions finishing it off as the champions from Kildonan East just leave it be. And that is the game. Kildonan East are your side A champions for the Manitoba High School Esports Association Spring Invitation. That was a, you, you kind of predicted what we were going to see. We yeah. saw the, the stomp from, you see the high level skill players. But don't get me wrong, Windsor Park played their best knowing they were in a deficit. They played their hearts out, you know. I'm really impressed with what Windsor Park were going to do. You know, if, if you've ever seen the rank discrepancies that we saw here and you've seen two champ, two players from that kind of rank discrepancy go up against each other, honestly, it's not pretty. And Windsor Park definitely put up a fight, especially I've got to shout out Joaquin, who really, really did a great job in the first game there on the Samira, winning that lane for sure. And, uh, you know, Nezu coming in in the second game, seven kills on the Mordekaiser, trying to challenge them up in the top lane. You know, so definitely some good stuff from Windsor Park. It's no wonder they made it this far. But in the end, Kildon and East, just they've been playing for so long. You can tell they are so comfortable in their game. They are so strong. They've got a champion pool to boot. They are just, they can do kind of whatever they want with this game. And they really made it into theirs. Yeah, it was, it was, not, it was a very entertaining game to watch. We saw some great plays mm -hmm. from the Mord and we saw some great plays from the Kaisa. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the skill level is the big deficit in this game. Absolutely. So that is going to do it. Kildonan East takes side A, and Glenlawn takes side B in this, uh, well, in this day of League of Legends. A couple of really fun best of threes. It's been a pleasure, man. You know, I'll, uh, I'll throw it over to you because I know, uh, you know you're, you've been kind of around this stuff longer than I have, but I'm, I'm just really happy to have been here. Yeah, it was nice having you. It was like our first time working together, yeah. but Shout out to the LRSD TV crew for doing this while under COVID-19 restrictions. Because right now we are in restrictions, which is horrible for everyone. But Winnipeg, we will fight through this. Mm. Yeah, thanks again. And uh, yeah, thanks to Brian and uh, everybody who helped us set this up. Shout out to all of you. You're all awesome. And uh, yeah, I think that's all we have to do besides also, of course, thanking Dell, uh, sponsoring this event. Thank you so much to Dell for helping make this happen. And uh, I suppose that's going to do it. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. My name is Wes Rambo. This is Mark. Sorry, you, you say you're... Yeah. <laughs> I'm Mark Aaron, and, <laughs> and we'll be signing out for tonight. Right. Have a good night, everybody.